gospel of our Lord, and call them to St. Mark. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way he asked them, who do people say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. And he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, and take up their cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet for feet their soul? But what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Amen. So please sit down. I want to think this morning about different ways of preaching. And, uh, and how we hear, and to take something from each of the four readings that we had today. The first one, Psalm 19, talks about the sky declares. The, the, the sky declares. Uh, I don't know about you, I love a glorious sunset. Right? Where we live upstairs, we don't see sunsets very well because the, the mountain is right behind us here. We do have incredibly beautiful sunrises right, because we look directly east and then in the, in the morning uh, you just see the sun coming up and you think, wow, what a great God we have. A beautiful dawn, a beautiful sunset. According to Psalm 19, all our preachers, there are people who communicate something to us. A message of a God who is glorious. The word glory carries the idea in you of heaviness. It, it's something that weighs you down. It's something so awesome that you think, wow, how can I cope with this? And I don't know if you've ever experienced that, but you see some of the incredible beauty of nature. On October the 19th, the Saturday year, change of date, we're having our um, Focus on Creation equivalent of the Autumn Fair. It's a special event from 1 to 4 o'clock on Saturday the 19th. And uh, it will be for recycling of uh, things that uh, you want to pass on to other people and uh, available this information up at the back and there will be more information coming out I think in the mailing last week something was sent out. But the reason that we're concerned about the environment as Christians is because this is God's creation and we're responsible for helping to take care of it. And it's very interesting coming from a mission background how uh, that mission societies all over the world for centuries um, really encourage the care of the environment. And the care of the environment is not something that we do simply because it's an in thing. We do the care of the environment because this is God's world and we're responsible for ensuring that we take proper care of it. Um, now that's a very complex issue. Um, what is best for the world? Uh, I personally, uh, I'm very popular idea of buying locally. I always have a question about it because a lot of my work has been in the two thirds world, and where for years we urged them to produce things, to import, uh, and all of a sudden we're saying we buy locally, and people are then left becoming poorer in some of these countries. Who is it that pays best in some of the countries I've lived in? It's not often who we think it is. And so we cannot be naive about the best way to care for the environment. But God has made this world. He is created. Psalm 19 tells us about that glory. But it's difficult 
in a marvellous uh, sunset or sunrise to have an idea that God is love. Uh, what it tells us is about his greatness and his glory. In the reading from Proverbs, it talks about what wisdom calls aloud. And saying something verbally helps us to understand what we see outside. And wisdom says there is a right way and there is a wrong way. Uh, in Deuteronomy 13, 19, it says, This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. A choice is a choice of life. Now, really interestingly, there's another reading in 2 Kings where someone else says to the people of Israel, Choose life. But there is an enemy. And the enemy is saying to the people of Israel, give up your city. Let us come in and take over. Choose life. So the same words, identical words in Hebrew, are said by two different groups of people. One positively and one negatively. And therefore wisdom, which is related to discernment, says let's pay attention to who's saying what and the character behind it. Choose my instruction, says Proverbs, instead of silver knowledge rather than choice gold. There's one verse in Proverbs 12 that says, The righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. The righteous choose their friends carefully. And that's interesting, isn't it? How we choose who we are going to be with. And that's important because that influences us one way or the other. As a, I was just reading some <coughs> BBC news on my tablet, there's been a, a, a case uh, this last week of, um, of men feeling pressure to take part in, in sexual activities in the company. And it was all because they feared the boss. And the fear led them to a way which was both sinful and wrong and damaging. And it was because of a working situation and they felt compelled in not to keep their jobs to behave in a certain way. I think this verse, choose your friends carefully, applies to every part of our lives. That we take care who we work with. We take care who we trust. And we take care in wisdom who we listen to. So do we listen to what is wise, helpful, and constructive? Wisdom calls aloud and says there is a right way to behave and the wrong way. In the book of James, it says tongues that teach. Um, the first verse applies to, uh, to Massimo and to myself and to a number of you who work with uh, children in the children's church. Not many of you, and, um, and also to a number of you who are professional teachers, not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. I always find that kind of sobering verse when I prepare sermons, uh, that those who teach will be judged more strictly. It says we all stumble in many ways. Anyone who has never read fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. If we control our tongues perfectly, then we're perfect people. Um, at every single wedding I do, and um, uh, Massimo were joining one last week, which was a couple from Lausanne, uh, part of it was in French. I was saying this story to, to Josette and Alain before. Uh, I had to say the vowels in French very quietly, and then they had to repeat them, and my French is not great. And so I thought I would run over with my wife, who happens to be in France at present. And so uh, I said, Debbie, let me just say this in French and uh, see how it goes. And when I finish, you must start laughing. Uh, uh, I said, uh, that's not very encouraging. Uh, <laughs> she says, no, oh, what I'm laughing at, John? Your French is with a Spanish accent and not with a British accent. <laughs> and, uh, but always it is about the fact that we, the person I've said to, sorry to most of my life is my wife and then my children. Because if we're perfect people, we keep our tongues right. sorry. And of course, we so often don't do it. Uh, we have to say sorry for the way that we've spoken. 
when we put baits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn a whole animal. Or take ships, a small rudder, and look what the tongue does. The damage it can, can, it can cause. And the question there, in terms of preaching with our tongues, is do our words match our commitment to Jesus? We recognize that no one gets this right all the time, which is why I love confession. Do our words bless and uplift? Does our humor bless and uplift? Do we encourage each other with our tongues? Do we thank each other? Do we praise each other? And the coffee that we have after the service is absolutely as much as important in some ways. Because in that coffee time, we can actually lead people to go out discouraged and feeling negative. Or people can go out feeling encouraged and blessed because of how we've spoken to each other during that time. And finally, from Mark, this gospel, and the, the one of Jesus, who do people say that I am? When you go through the gospels, you discover all sorts of people saying who Jesus is. Many of them women, incidentally. Um, Debbie in France has just been translating into English. Um, so I'm checking the translation of a book uh, on, uh, uh, on women in history. <laughs> And one of the things that one of the theologians in that book was pointing out that a lot of the times it's the woman saying to Jesus, This is who you are. But Jesus says to his disciples, Who do you say that I am? And they said, We see who you are. You are the Messiah. And then he says, If you want to become my followers, deny yourselves, take up your cross, and follow me. These people have been observing Jesus. And therefore they were able to answer the question, who do people say that I am? Other people's replies are not enough. They, they quote other people, saying they say we are Elijah, John the Baptist, and one of the prophets. And then Jesus pinpoints them and says, who do you say that I am? Christ forces it from the general to the very specific, and says to each one of us, who do you say? that I am. And then he follows it with, follow me, with all that entails. And Jesus' question is the core question. If he wants a Christian say, this is the most basic, the most important, and potentially the most exciting and life-changing question. Who is Jesus? It's a question for this life and not just for eternity. And if he was a one, then we must follow him and the compass of our lives will be changed. It's a question to believe in our minds, a question to believe in our hearts, a question to believe in our hands, and it's a question to believe in our feet, so that we're following him with every part of our being. Our whole being is to say, I follow Jesus.
and all the things for which we give thanks. We pray for all the church, both here in St. George's and throughout the world, and all who call themselves Christians, that they may go forward in unity and strength. Help us to respect the beliefs of others, even when we do not share them, to celebrate what we have in common, and to accept our differences. Guide us all in our ministries as we live each day. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Be it to God, drive away despair from our politics, revive our views of justice and truth, and restore our passion for what is good and right. Establish your just and gentle rule for our world, especially when there is conflict, where peace seems so far away and so many have lost everything, even the faith of a peaceful future. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious God, help us always to remember that in life we are third, that you are first, and the neighbour comes second. Help us always to practice unselfishness as we try to live out lives that we genuinely try to be the servant of all as our Lord commanded. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, you gave your prophet Isaiah an instructive tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. Help us to comfort the weary and those who are ill with a call or a visit or through the post with a get well card. Help also to be constant in our prayer for friends and family in any kind of needs. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving Father, we pray for those who have died alone, unnoticed, and unwronged. We pray for those who have committed suicide or died in accidents of their own making. We commend all the departed for your merciful love. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Faithful God, as we leave this place today and we return to our homes and loved ones who are near to us, strengthen our faith, deepen our love for you and for our neighbour, and open our eyes to the wonder of your creation. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Simon. Sunday morning service is really two services. It's the service of the Word, as it's called, and the service of the sacrament, the red wine. And that, that is joined together by the peace when we greet each other again, like we did at the very beginning. And uh, the purpose of that is that uh, Jesus says that when we come to the altar to worship Him, that we don't have anything in our hearts against anyone else. He says if you do, resolve that first before you come to communion, because you're going to have to sit uh, and kneel together. Um, and so uh, please stand if you can and follow this. We are all one in Christ Jesus, we belong to Him through faith, is the promise of the Spirit of peace. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share a sign of peace with each other.
uh, but thank you everyone. And uh, but this is the offertory hymn, it's called, when we offer ourselves to God in response to uh, what we've been talking about, singing about. We offer bread and wine to the Lord as we come to communion. And we offer our gifts of thanks to God as well. And so the song we're going to sing are three verses of uh, number 134, For All the Saints.
We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit. That broken bread and wine out poured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. For on the night before he died, had supper with his friends. And taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them and said, Eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The supper was ended. He took the cup of wine and again he praised you. Gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. And bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes, and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favor on your people, gather us into your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, blessing and honor and glory upon God. Be your Amen. Amen. Do please sit. We sing the prayer of our Lord Jesus called us in prayer.
leading us in the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice, sending us out from the power of your Spirit to the name of the Lord, to the grace of the Lord. Amen. Uh, there are a number of community notices this morning. Um, the first is uh, with, uh, to do with the lounge. Uh, we now have a working speaker in the lounge for, for children, uh, for parents on the university who want to organize a correction there. So the speaker is connected to the two speakers at the back. So it means if you're in the lounge, uh, you can hear the, the service um, without having the door open. So that just makes it easier if you're young children uh, and you want them to be comfortable, and then please do your that. Uh, and if afterwards, uh, if you could clear away the toys, and it just makes it easier for everyone else. So uh, uh, it's really great that we're able to get that set up. Um, on the 28th of this month is the church picnic in Tordera. And uh, new instructions were sent out last week uh, by Josephine because there's been a change in the road system in Tordera. So uh, if anyone who uh, wishes is able to join us. There's a sign-up sheet there. If you've got a car, to put down how many people you can take. And if you don't have a car, how many, um, then just leave that blank. Just to say, there is a swimming pool there. So um, if the weather is decent, then uh, if you want to take uh, swimming mushrooms, then uh, please uh, do that. Uh, I wasn't there because I was doing a wedding, but I think about four years ago, my father was at that picnic and went into the swimming pool at 95 years of age. So, uh, <laughs> uh, then, uh, uh, see what the rest of us can do. Uh, as I mentioned before, Saturday the 19th of October uh, is our Caring for Creation event. And I just want to congratulate Silas, who last week we were praying for him as he had um, his uh, V Viva. Okay. Viva. <coughs> Sorry? Viva. Vibrary, a defense of his PhD. And then uh, you got Summa Cum Laude. Oh. Uh, so, uh, congratulations to him on that, and you can imagine uh, a great relief for him. Uh, just remember what I said about some more help goes upstairs uh, and at the back. Uh, Felicia is uh, going to be helping with rotas for coffee and tea after church and uh, if any of you would like to help and take one week about we have relied so much on Dorothy and Alex and an enormous thank you to them and uh, I hope they will be part of the rota in the future um, but um, if you're able to to help with that then see Felicia could you stand up for me so that you can see who you are <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, prayer on Wednesday here in the lounge at 8 o'clock. Um, and uh, something about our prayer ministry from Jenny. Um, after the service, normally we have a team that prays with and for people uh, who have particular requests. And um, at the moment, we're not praying, we're still in our kind of summer thinking. But, but I'm collecting people that are interested, um, particularly if you've been on a prayer team before or you've been part of a prayer ministry before. But if you would like to um, be part of, part of our and thinking for that, then please either speak to me or speak to John. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, three more, just, uh, just to let you know how I live and I have 13 this morning. Um, music. Just to let you know that St. George's Singers will be having our first rehearsal after the service, and it's not too late. If you read music and can hold your part, you can come along and see me, and we can fit you in. Thanks. Gerard, 14 hours. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, as you all know, we are getting married very soon. Uh, <laughs> say it will be on the 4th of October, which is a, it's a Friday, and we will be 
signing of the papers in the morning, and then the, the church blessing will be at 1.30. We'll start the sermon at 1.30. So I know it's a weekday, but if any of you are free, of course, you're very welcome to, uh, to join them. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, we're looking forward to having very much. Actually, the wedding is here. There's a wedding the day after here as well. So two days after each other, the, the one the day after uh, from um, New York, who are coming in for the, for the wedding. Um, next Saturday at 11 o'clock in the morning is the baptism of Davidy, um, Massimo and Monica's son. And uh, the reason we're having it on Saturday, because we normally have a spot for Sunday service, people are coming in from other places to that, and it's his birthday, so they're coming over for that. So we're celebrating then at 11 o'clock, but anyone who is free, do please come and join us for that celebration. And uh, most of it will be taken by Massimo, his father, which will be very special, so thank you. And the final one is a prayer for Debbie, my wife on her sabbatical. Um, I heard from her this morning that last night it was two degrees where she is in France and uh, she's sleeping on that because of the very in our house has been having work on it and she's sleeping outside in a small place and she had no heating but she said that she was so well wrapped up that she had a great sleep and a great time but the lavender uh, is on sale at the back at least two euros a bag uh, to help pay for her journey to Peru which is taking part in uh, the 150th celebration of the church. The painter, while well, she was for her tea, while well, she's there, but um, not for her travels. So if anyone could help in that, that, um, that would be great. She sends her love and asks that you do keep praying for her during these months of sabbatical. I think that is everything, believe it or not. <laughs> You know, Bill says actually put his number one on my list. <laughs> but I, I need to make my eyes go back. Uh, we celebrate birthdays in this church because people's families are from all over the world. And so does anyone have a birthday in the last week? Well, I had twins who celebrate 29 today. 29 Louis. <laughs> Lovely. Mark. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Any others? Others. Precious. When? Friday. Friday. Gloria. Any others? Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh. So that's a lot. Trinity. No, we did mine last week. <laughs> <laughs> Let's sing how you look. Jenny, my niece. Oh, Jenny, your niece. <laughs> Let's pray for Jenny. Some of you will know her. She sometimes comes to our affairs, etc. She lives out of town who is going through some major surgery for cancer. So uh, that's really good pray for Jenny and the whole family at this time. Let's sing happy birthday. <laughs>
from Nigeria. She said, well, the ones we sing, but our rhythm is just a bit different. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, it's great to sing God's praises. Notice that it was praise my Savior, the first person singular, but yet we were all doing it together. And there are times to recognize the first person singular that is mine. And there are times to recognize it's actually, it is ours because of the mine, if that makes sense. The, 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 the plural is because the singular is there. And so as we go to serve God this week, Christ, who has nourished with us with himself the living bread, make you one in praise and love, and raise you up at the last day, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.